Hey everybody, it's Kyle from Young Legends Street Hockey. This is our podcast number eight. Um, hope everybody's doing well, staying safe. And uh, I know in the state of Massachusetts, things are starting to reopen. And, you know, for Young Legends, we've actually agreed to have our season on uh, starting in July, July 10th and 11th, and we're going to run to August 15th. So it should be a, uh, a, a sort of a short, but as long as we get a season in, that'll be most important to us um, and of course our coaching staff so uh, we're right now currently working on making sure that it's safe for everybody but it should be uh, another fabulous season I'm really looking forward to it so um, like I said I hope everybody's staying up staying safe sign up um, at our at our game and play slash wild street hockey website and, and you'll be able to get signed up and get you on a team so anyway moving forward today I have someone who is person who's up and coming in the world of ball hockey. He's a guy that is in a lot of ways an entrepreneur in my mind because he started he started street hockey, ball hockey leagues. Um, he's also a great guy. We've had a chance to connect a little bit. I'm really excited to introduce uh, the person who is cre has part of creating the National Ball Hockey League, Mr. Anthony San Rocco. Oh, Got it. Perfect. Perfect. Getting it getting close, Anthony. Thank you. Um, Anthony is also <laughs> yeah. Anthony is also one of the co-creators of the EBHL. Are the is it the Eversham Ball Hockey League? Okay, and he's also he's also a practicing nurse. So he's had to live through this pandemic day by day through all of this. I'm sure he has many stories about that. Um, <laughs> T today we're going to more talk about ball hockey and, and really talk to him about um, where he thinks the game is headed, where the NBHL is headed, which I'm thrilled to, to excite about. And for those of you who don't know, we actually have a branch of the NBHL right out in Fitchburg, Mass. So uh, this is one of, the, one of the longest introductions, Anthony. Thank you so much for joining me today. Yeah, wow. I'm honored. I've never had an introduction like that. I've done a couple of these now, and that is by far the longest one. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it, it was long. I had to add in our season. So, um, but Anthony, tell us a little bit about yourself, you know, where you grew up, uh, some of the sports you played growing up, your passions, things like that. Yeah, I'm born and raised in South Jersey, lived here my whole life for, um, except for a couple months where I went to Seattle and did some travel nursing last year, but otherwise always been in South Jersey. It's where I'm at right now. Um, I started playing street hockey when I was five years old. Um, you know, I played all the sports growing up, I played baseball, I played soccer, um, but hockey was just the sport that always stuck with me, specifically ball hockey. I did a year of ice hockey, but I never really kept going. I was like 11 years old. But um, yeah, every single year of my life since I was five, minus uh, my last year of college, I just didn't have time for it. But otherwise, I've you know, always been a player, been playing men's A for a decent time now and just love the game. When when did you really start to feel like you were going to take your ball hockey game to the next level and play for, you know, the Golden State Warriors? Where, when, when did you start to – what's that? Garden State, Garden State. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, you're good. I mean, it's a play on words anyway, so it's close enough. <laughs> but – um. That was like that. I mean, I was playing men's A for, um, I started playing for Jersey Fresh, played for them for probably like two or three years. Then I hopped over to this, um, like the Blackwood, Gloucester Township, Sloss, played for them for a couple years. And I guess as we got older, like there was always two or three Jersey teams that were like A level teams that were competing, but not really winning anything and I guess a group of guys came together um I guess it was like over to about two years ago now and they said hey let's make this team of um you know let's get the best players in Jersey and just bring them all together and it you know it ended up breaking up a few teams and changing a lot of the dynamic of the sport but we had uh like a really big tryout and I would say like we had like 50 or 60 players come out. We ended up being able to split up into two teams and um, the rosters were picked. We, we do, we vote every couple months on the roster. We have like eight to 10 guys that just rank the players. We average them out. Top nine guys are the Warriors, our A team. Um, second nine guys are on the Indians for offense on our, um, you know, they're like pretty much an A team as well. 
and then, um, you know, top 60 are on the Warriors, bottom six are on the Indians, top two goalies, bottom two goalies, and that's the rosters. And then we have other guys that are always willing to fill in. <clears throat> so we've, you know, over the past few years, we've grown it into a pretty decent program. We compete with all the major A teams now. Um, we just won our first A tournament beginning of this year, the Super Bowl bye week in uh, Harrisburg. So uh, we're on the way up. We, we practice. Well, we obviously not now because of the pandemic, but we've been practicing once a week for since we started, essentially. We always practice scrimmage and we have like an A-level game and everyone's just getting better and we've all really come together. It's a great group of guys. We have a lot of fun. Like it's a ton of fun. Interesting. When, when you, can you tell us a little bit about what the state of New Jersey is like as far as ball hockey? Because I mean, I've, I've heard that there's even a high school division now with us high school teams playing against one another. What, it seems to be a real hub for street hockey and ball hockey right now. Yeah, I mean, growing up, like, youth, youth street hockey and ball hockey in South Jersey is huge. Like, there's tons of programs all over the state that, you know, have very competitive seasons. I mean, I played for Marlton growing up. Um, I know Gloucester Township is huge now. Um, you know, the programs change, but I mean – I know in Marlton, like, there were times where we'd have, like, 16 teams per division of, like, you know, 15 kids per team. So youth ball hockey is huge, always has been, always will be, and, like, everyone's playing. We're getting more deck ranks. Um, before, we were always playing on street, but now Belmar's got a deck rank. Gloucester has one. Marlton has two. So in that sense, it's moving more to ball hockey than street hockey. But, um, you know, the sport's growing, and then – there's the high school ball hockey league. Scott Tarzi founded that. Um, last year was their first season. I think they had 16 high schools in that. It was he? He did an awesome job. It was really successful. Um, and that's growing more. I'm sure they're going to add more teams this year. And then for the men's scene, there's various men's leagues all throughout South Jersey. Um, <clears throat> I know myself. I run the Eve Sham Ball Hockey League with um, my brother Gianni and my friend my friend TJ Janis. Um, three of us have been running it. <clears throat> since <clears throat> geez, sorry since um 2015 we started that and um yeah we had we would have had uh 20 teams in it this year around 350 players if we were able to have our season and uh yeah there's there's if if you're looking to play you can probably find a rink to play in south jersey within 30 minutes of you wherever you're at there's there's a lot of it out, out down here that's really interesting to us. And just so people are aware, uh, you know, when you mentioned Gloucester, you know, Young Legends is out of Gloucester, Mass. So um, we always <laughs> – it's really interesting. I, I told you the story offline a little bit, but for those who know, when I first met Corey Hurst, one of the things that he said to me, he goes, when I heard that there was a, a group from Gloucester trying to build a, a, you know, a street hockey rink, I was like, Gloucester, New Jersey. And, and, and I had to clarify to Corey that, no, we're, we're Gloucester, Mass. So uh, a little bit different, but with, with – you know, the comparison is up here in the East and the Northeast. There's a lot of obviously ice hockey is ice hockey prevalent in New Jersey as well, or is it more deck and ball hockey? No, there's a lot of ice hockey out here. I mean, I'm not, you know, as well educated world first and like the ice hockey world and what they got going on. But I mean, three minutes down the road for me is the flyer skate zone. They got leagues going there all the time. I know there's junior teams and I notice now and like, youth like the younger kids coming up in ball hockey a lot of them play ice and ball hockey at the same time so they're um honestly just getting better and better because of that playing both at the same time just makes you an incredible player but yeah there's a there's a ton of ice hockey high school ball high school ice hockey is huge here too interesting yeah that because that's one thing that we're as, as you already know this part of the thing that we're trying to do is, is grow the game of of hockey in a lot of different ways and one of the one of the gateways into hockey is through, you know, street and ball hockey for sure, because um, we're hoping that when we get the chance to build our rink, we'll get more kids that have never even, you know, stepped on ice and get them, you know, into, into ball hockey. And maybe, and maybe, maybe Anthony, maybe they do go on and play, play ice hockey, or maybe they just stay in our program and try to get to an A division someday, you know what I mean? Or, or someday play in the NBHL. So I think, I think there's so much opportunity for ball hockey players right now. It's, um, I kind of feel like I missed out on a, a lot of things growing up because who knows, maybe I would have been more of a ball hockey player than, than an ice <laughs> hockey player, you know? Um, but, you know, with that said, so 
tell us a little bit about how the NBHL came up as an idea and has, has really come to fruition. If, if the pandemic wasn't going on, we'd be, we'd be going. So yeah, we'd be, we'd be right at the mid, mid point of the season right now. But, um, so the NBHL, I guess, technically started when, well, it was built from the Eve Shambal Hockey League, which we started in 2015. It was myself, TJ Janis, as I mentioned, and um, Pat Janis, who's no longer working with us. Actually, he's going to be involved with the EVHL this year. But um, he was out. He wasn't with us for a couple years. But we started a, you know, a four-on-four re- league on a concrete rink. We had 100 players and 10 teams in our first season. And 2015, 2016, 2017, 2018, just like grew little by little in talent. We just had more players come in. And in 2018, we kind of were at like a crossroads. We were like, okay, like we've kind of done everything that we can with this four on four rink. What can we do to make this better? And uh, myself, along with Gianni and TJ, we came up with an outline for the National Ball Hockey League. And you know, we're not the most patient. We wanted to, you know, jump into it right away, but people didn't really know who we were. They didn't really, you know, we just had a system that we thought would work and we could make a national league. So I met with, um, I actually met with Scott Tarzi, who runs the high school ball hockey league and kind of like ran the outline by him. And he suggested to me, he's like, well, why don't you go all out with the Eve Sharon ball hockey league, use the brand new deck rinks in Marlton and grow it into the national ball hockey league. So we said, let's do that. So last year with our EBHL, we have, I mean, we've recorded video of every game. We have highlight reels of every game. We have top 10 highlight reels of every single week of all the best plays. And we grow a pretty big social media following. And um, towards the end of our season last year, I met Corey, Corey Hirsch, and he, you know, loved what we did. We did some stuff for the national team when they were overseas editing videos and stuff. And I said to him, I was like, hey, I have, we have this idea for the National Ball Hockey League. And uh, we pitched it to Corey. Corey thought it was great. Corey got me connected with uh, Ryan Wilson out in um, Massachusetts. He, um, you know, I knew Wayne. Corey got us in touch with Wayne. You know, Corey runs the Pittsburgh division. Um, and we had, you know, we had Chicago. We had Frank Klein run in Chicago. And probably about five or six other rinks that we spoke to about the National Ball Hockey League all pretty much through Corey. And when, you know, we had a big presentation sometime and I want to say it was October-ish of um, 2019. And at the end of that meeting, Pittsburgh, D.C., Jersey, Massachusetts, and Chicago said, yeah, we're in, let's do it. So over the next few months, all these different regions, you know, they picked ranks where, you know, Ryan Wilson was doing his rinks in Fitchburg. Wayne has his rink in D.C. Corey, they have their system in Pittsburgh where they're going to be rotating from rink to rink to rink. Um, and then we have our rinks in South Jersey. Frank has his rink in Chicago. <clears throat> and they were just forming teams. And when we were getting ready to start, we would have had, I believe it was 39 or 40 teams. I know Chicago is towards the end was having little issues grabbing people and the pandemic really kind of messed with them. So... I'm not sure that they would have 100% been able to do it when it came time to start, but I know between Pittsburgh, Jersey, Mass, and D.C., we had 10 teams in Pittsburgh, 9 in New Jersey, 8 in D.C., and 8 in Massachusetts. So, I don't know. I can't do the math that quick in my head, but whatever whatever amount of teams that is, that's what we had. Um, yeah, we were ready to go. You know, we had our schedules ready, our, our website, and then the pandemic hit, so we had to stop. So, you know, right now we're – <clears throat> we've, you know, the, the, the season's not going to be able to happen with all this stuff. It's just impossible. We're hoping that we can have a tournament in uh, August slash September and the way that we would work. That is, in August, each division would have their own tournament at their ranks between all their NBHL teams. You know, there'd be a champion and a runner-up, and then those teams would travel to D.C. in September, and those top eight teams would all play, and that would be, like, our – opening tournament I guess you know start for the year and then you know you can't really start in October that's when you know Massachusetts has a bunch of tournaments all the youth league starts all the kids go to college like there's just you you lose a lot of players in that time so we don't want to do like um you know a half effort season for that point so 
you know, if we, we hope we can get this tournament in, if we can't, we're just going to, you know, start up in April like we would have this year. I, I love the idea of having like sort of a, you know, a little round, not a round robin, like a tournament that you had mentioned that I think that's perfect. Yeah. Um, and then that championship goes down and plays in the national event. Um, w- with that said, what would be the difference in skill level from sort of the EBHL that you're running right now compared to the, the NBHL? Would it be a higher division or an equivalent? So our top division, like last year in the EBHL, we had 10 teams. This year in the EBHL, we split into an upper and a lower division. Our upper division is the NBHL division for South Jersey. So we have our nine teams and each team has at least a couple men's A players. Actually, there's, I think there's one or two teams that don't have any men's A players, but they still have like college ice hockey guys and people that know how to play the game. Like it's very, very high skilled. And um, our second division is, I mean, we still have, it's very talented division. It's good, but the um, it's a, you know, the top, nine teams are going to beat the bottom division teams, I think nine times out of 10, but it's the same, essentially that it's, a, it's, I think six of the same teams from the EBHL last year and the NBHL this year. So a lot of teams carried over. It's a lot of the same guys and the talent just kind of condensed a little bit. And um, a lot, a couple of players that weren't in it last year have come in this year. People are traveling a little further. We got people coming from, um, know an hour or two away one of the teams apparently has guys from buffalo playing in our division which they're gonna like we had to do our schedule differently so they have double headers so these guys can drive in from buffalo once every couple weeks to come play in our hockey league so we're bringing in more talent this year in our evgm division because people are a little they see what we got you know the talent that's there and uh we're just bringing in more players that's that's really interesting because I have actually had a chance, um, and I credit this to, to you know Mike White in you know Ball Hockey News up here. Mike's been great about sharing what the Massachusetts NBH teams sort of what their logos are and who those teams are. Um, so that's how I've been able to follow it a little bit. And I've yeah, he's, been, he's been awesome with that. It, it's a huge help that he's been able to like kind of help us get some you know let people visualize what we got going on up there. Yeah, it's, it's, it's just an excellent, and, and I do know Ryan Wilson personally, so um, I, I, you know, can always reach out to him too, but um, you've, been, you've been in the A divisions, you've played in some of these A division tournaments, do you have a favorite one? I'm sorry, what was it? I'm uh, sorry, the a, on the A divisions, do you have a favorite tournament that you guys, the Garden State Warriors, not Golden State, I was thinking of the basketball team, sorry about that, everybody. <laughs> Is there a tournament that you guys like? the best to play in that's at a national event? Well, I mean, I'd say the two top tournaments right now are um, the cool hockey events, North American um, ball hockey championships each year. They do, they bring like 20 teams in. They, they bring teams from Canada, like, you know, teams that I never thought I'd have the opportunity to play against. I get to play against once a year and it's just the competition's insane. And then, and then that's in March. And then two months later in May, um, the gods and Corey just started the club championships, which last year was the first year of that. And that was, I mean, I remember going up there the, the first night, the Friday night, it was um, the gods versus um, the Montreal red light, which is like, they're like the three on three champions, but they played five on five for the clubs. And they've got um, Alex Burroughs on the team. Like they have some, you know, they're insane. And I remember I got to the game like midway through the second period because I was coming right after work and we had like a four hour drive and it was, there was a couple hundred people watching this game and it was like, I felt like I was at a professional sporting event watching, you know, watching ball hockey. And then I stepped on the, and I stepped on the rink next and everyone left. No one watched our game like that one, but it was, um, the atmosphere was unlike anything that I've ever seen the club championships. It was, it was pretty special, but between those two tournaments, I mean, the competition, is great and i mean they have harrisburg the competition in harrisburg for the super bowl bye week is pretty decent george tarantino uses grabs eight to ten of the top teams and then you know the warriors we've been going to uh can-ams up in lowenster the past few years and you know we'll head up to play in a massachusetts tournament this year as well and there's um i don't know a lot of talent a lot of great teams it's always fun will you be playing in, in lemonster has is it november they have a tournament is that the one you're coming up for 
I'll be honest, I'm not totally sure what we're doing yet. I think it's kind of up in the air. We're, we're going to play in – honestly, our whole team is just dying to play. So whatever tournaments come first, I'm sure that we're just going to do whatever we have to do. But I, I forget what we're actually doing. But we're, we're playing in something in Massachusetts coming up. That's awesome. Hopefully I'll get a chance to, to see you guys yeah. there. You know, well, um, uh, I want to say it's the one in Fitchburg, but I don't know for sure. It, okay. Uh, have you played at Lemonster before? Oh yeah, I played I played in Lemonster since I was like the first time I played there I was like twelve years old or something. I was young, thirteen. But um was I that young? I forget. I was I think I was a cadet maybe. I forget how old I was, but I've been playing there for a little while now. But I've never been to the rinks in Fitchburg. I know they're I guess they're maybe a newer facility. I I, I don't I don't really know. I guess I guess it has to be because Lemonster's like the original, but yeah, I've never been up to the Fitchburg ones. Yeah, our goal, our goal was when the NBHL kicked off in April was to, um, a, as we've been building, you know, planning this to build this rink in Gloucester, we've actually, we've looked at Lemonster, you know, they have the MS3 tile, but we were going to go to Fitchburg to see their tile. They use a different type of tile, um, but we just like to see different people, how they design their rinks and what that looks like. So, yeah. um we had planned to go watch the opening for, you know, the Fitchburg, you know, the NBHL division there, check out the rinks all in one day so we could see both. And of course yeah. that fell through, but um, yeah. hopefully when you get a chance to come up here, I'll get a, get a chance to, just to meet you in person and, yeah, yeah. and do that. Um, I, I think that when you, when you talk about these teams, like the gods in Corey's, you know, Corey's team and, you know, there's the Lemonster Rams and the Americans, you know, Bobby, Bobby Hauser gave me some insight into what those teams are like. Yeah. Uh, it's just a really great sort of niche sport where, I mean, hopefully that someday we'll be able to get involved in it as, as well and have a team from Gloucester Mass be able to compete at these levels. But I, I, I don't know if people yet, you know, Northeast of Boston understand how big this, this can, this can be, how exciting it can be. So um that's, that's, you know, that's what I think the biggest issue with this sport is. There's these great tournaments and there's this great competition, and these extremely talented players and people that are like, I mean, I think it's so fun to watch. But unless you're at the games, you're really not going to be able to see it at any level. If you go on YouTube and Google ball hockey, like they have, um, they have stuff from like the ISHF World Championships and everything, but you know, at a local level or like at the regional level, like what we have here with these men's teams and stuff, people don't really know what's happening and they can't really see it. And that's one of the things we've tried to do with the EBHL with our social media and editing our games and stuff. We want everything out there. And we, I mean, if you go online, you can watch any game of our entire season last year online in full, like full highlights, everything. So that's just what has to happen with the sport and, you know, podcasts like this and, uh, deck hockey focus and everything that just brings visibility to sport is just you know increasing it more that was actually the first time that i had learned of of you was through deck hockey focus so um i you know i that's what you need you need that you know they spend some time probably traveling being from iowa yeah. <laughs> getting yeah. to these tournaments um i give them so much so much credit i mean and, and and that's what like you said that's what we need i mean i've been trying to get our players to watch um, some of the ISBHF events. Um, I've shared USA ball hockey events to our players to show them like, you know, at these games, you've got 9,000 people. I mean, of course it's, a, it's Slovakia and, and the Czech, but you know, yeah. banging on drums and it's a huge event. And, you know, as Bobby was saying to me the other day, he was telling me that, you know, these events have these opening ceremonies and it's, it's a, it's a really a, 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 such a, it's an event now more than anything. And I, I you know, my goal for our players is when we have the rink down and of course you can't make kids do anything, but when our rink is built is to at least have the opportunity that for them, that if they want to compete at a, at a very high level at an A division or even represent their country, they have a system in place that can at least help them mature into those type of players. So, but it's people like you, Anthony, that come around and you start these programs, you know, that's why I say you have the entrepreneurial mindset because we need people like you to get, you know, smaller branches is up feeding a national, a national level, you know? So, so thank you yeah. for that. No, I know. Of course. I mean, I mean, when I remember growing up, I played my last game in cadets and nationals and we lost. And I remember thinking like, wow, I'm done playing ball hockey. Like I'm just finished. And 
there's, I didn't know about men's division. I didn't know about any of this stuff. And luckily, um, I'm not sure if you know Bobby Jones, a guy, he's a guy who runs Jersey Fresh in South Jersey. He um, introduced me to the men's ball hockey team and kind of like reopened up. And I felt like, you know, I felt like I was a kid again, being an adult playing in these leagues. And, you know, I wish that I had something to look up to when I was younger and be like, hey, you know what? I can still play this when I'm older. Like I can continue doing this. So it's something that I hope to create for the youth players now where they can see, you know, these men's tournaments. They can see the National Ball Hockey League and, you know, with USA Ball Hockey, all the stuff they do for the national team and all the stuff they're doing for the game. It's like, you know, you want kids to be able to see, like you can continue playing this for a long time and have fun with it. Yeah. What, what other, I mean, you mentioned the, the divisions that are already in the program. Um, what do you envision for the future? What other states sort of have very massive or very big ball hockey programs? I know Florida has some teams as well, um, but what do you envision? I mean, I consider what we have right now for the National Ball Hockey League is almost like a prove it year. Like we need to prove that this system works. And I think once we do that and we show how, you know, how amazing of a league that we can build with all these teams and all these people all connected that all these other branches of ball hockey across the country are going to be like, Hey, like let's, we want to join this. We want to be a part of it and hopefully can become like a true national ball hockey league where we have, you know, they got leagues in LA, they got leagues in Portland, they got leagues in Texas, they got leagues in Michigan. You know, we could bring all these teams together because, I don't think I really explained how the league works, but the teams in these different regions don't actually play each other until the playoffs. Each division or region hosts their own season between these teams and they crown a champion and then they all meet somewhere for like the national championships. So any region anywhere can join this as long as they, you know, they're willing to travel for the championship and we just have to make that worthwhile for them. So it's just really just proving that we can make it work and hopefully bringing everyone in that to really ever want to be involved. That, that, that's a, I mean, that's a great idea. I mean, I, I didn't even ask you to explain how it broke down. I mean, that's why whoever wins Massachusetts will be going to DC. Um, and, and how does Milik fit into this? Because they, are they a sponsor of the league? Yeah. So they're our sponsor. They're um, helping us out with some equipment and stuff and some supplies and, um, just for visibility purposes, too, they help us out by, you know, social media and everything. We're going to have them on our jerseys. And, you know, Milek's, you know, the original street hockey brand, ball hockey. So, you know, we love Milek, and there's a company we want to be involved with. It's them. So they're just, you know, we're just kind of helping each other out. They were uh, – I got a chance to go out there and meet, um, you know, Anthony and Ricky a couple weeks yeah. ago. Uh, before the pandemic, all this hit, I, I visited with them. Um because we had talked about having a team, one of our youth teams, play in the Milet Cup. <laughs> Again, yeah. we don't know if this stuff is going to happen based on what everything's going on. Um, but great guys. I, I enjoyed them. Anthony said, next time you come out, you could get a tour of the facility. So yeah. you know, I pre appreciate that. But um, for the most part, I, I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm more excited about, you know, what you guys are doing because I'm, I'm, I, I think it has potential to do – you know, maybe someday it does become sort of our pro league here where everybody's trying to get to play at. Um, and like I said, I, I, we were planning on going out when it was starting and then, you know, things fell through, but um, sort of with, with, with that said though, um, as far as the pandemic, how's it been being a nurse and dealing with this? Pandemic? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's been, it's been, kind of chaos in the hospital so I don't work on the floor I work in the operating room so I do um I do mainly orthopedic surgeries like knee hip replacements I'll do some trauma like fractures type of stuff and for us it's just been we've been they've cut back on a lot of the elective surgeries so we haven't been as busy whereas the floors have been you know we have several units filled up with COVID patients and um, we have to wear a certain type of mask and personal protective equipment that we never really had to wear before. Um, you know, there's no, you know, I, the, the, the tough, it's one of the toughest things about this is that you can't visit people in the hospital right now. And, um, <clears throat> you know, there's people dying in there every day and they don't get to see their loved ones. So it's tough, but, um, 
luckily for me, I haven't had to, you know, I haven't had to deal with it firsthand as much as some of the other nurses have that are on the floors. Um, but yeah, from, from everything I've seen and everything that I've talked to people about, it's been, it's been, you know, a much different type of work than it ever has been really. Yeah, it's it's been a crazy time. I mean, uh, it's, you know, something I think, you know, we're living through history right now and, and, you know, being on the front line like you are, even if you are in the operating, going to the hospital, you can see those changes. You know, I feel like we've been very blessed with having family fairly healthy. Um, So with, with that adversity that comes with it, you know, leagues being postponed, some leagues have, you know, have lost their spring season. How do you sort of handle that adversity or is there a mindset that you have that you're like, I'm going to push through this? That's, that's pretty much what it comes down to is you just kind of, you know, there's a light at the end of the tunnel somewhere and you just got to, you know, keep pushing forward. You know, the hockey league su- stuff, like it sucks. Like it's, it, it really sucks that it happened, but you know, we're not the only ones dealing with it. A lot of people have a lot more on the line than we do with just the hockey league. So when the time comes, it's going to work out. Everything is going to work out eventually. It just, I don't know, you just got to wait till it gets there. One of, one of the things that I've felt through this whole time is that some of the things that I may have taken for granted in the past, like, for example, even though we don't have a street hockey rink, um, at the end of the week, on Friday nights, we play Friday nights and Saturday mornings because we play right around the baseball schedule. And I've always been a big believer that kids should have the opportunity to play multiple sports. And – you know, so we've tried to work our schedule so that kids that do play baseball can come and join and play street hockey on the weekends. And long story short, on Friday nights, after a long week of work, you know, it's such a beautiful location because you can just see the ocean from where we are. You get yeah. this cool breeze and, you know, kids are coming, they're showing up, they're ready to play, maybe you have a skill session or you have a game. And what I realized is that this coming weekend was supposed to be the beginning of our league. And yet that's the one thing I'm going to miss the most is sort of that, you know, the the sun's getting ready to set soon. You get a beautiful, cool breeze coming and um, kids playing. I'm going to admit it's things like that, that I won't take for granted moving forward because, you know, obviously the pandemic has has proved that to be, I took it for granted. So um, (laughs) I'm really looking for environment more than anything. Like, I mean, I miss, I miss the sport and everything, but. You know, I love going to the ranks and seeing all my buddies and just, you know, talking and watching games. And, it, yeah, it's it just it's, – it sucks. It's really all you can say. It's, so – but like you said, we'll get through it. There's, there's light at the end of the tunnel. Um, yeah. So I don't think people realize that, you know, becoming a nurse is four years of schooling, take license exams. What has made you successful? You know, what sort of qualities do you think that you have that's allowed you to push through to – to become successful? Uh, I don't know, honestly. I mean, I guess I just, I don't know. I set a goal, I figure out how to get there, and then I do it. I don't really, you know, I don't shy away from it. Like, I mean, when I was in nursing school, I had to stop playing hockey for a year. Like, I really, that really, you know, I didn't want to do that, but I had to to become a nurse. And then, you know, I've been able to use my nursing career and, you know, like I'm able to balance my schedule with the hockey stuff to be able to make both of these work at the same time. So I don't know. I've always just been under the mindset. If you want to make something happen, you can make it happen. You just got to find a way. So it's just all about managing your time and managing how you do stuff. And it works out. That's, that's perfect. I mean, I, I, I'm a big believer in goal setting and, um, and also making sure that the naysayers stay at bay, you know, someone tells you, you, know, you can't start a league, you know, yeah. you push them aside and you do whatever you can to take action to make them, to make it do it. Um, yeah, of course, with the people hate here and there, we just ignore it. It's like, no, just, <laughs> no you don't have that. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, what, what sort of advice do you have to, to our, to our youth players out there who are, you know, maybe they're <laughs> tier ball hockey players or, you know, maybe they're, 10 years into it, what sort of advice do you have for them? Um, I mean, if you love it, just keep playing. That's, I, you know, growing up, people were always playing high school sports and, um, you know, playing college sports. Now I'm never playing sports that I had like a really a future in like ball hockey. When I was growing up, there really was, like I said before, I didn't really know that there was any future in it, but I just played it because it's what I like to do most. It was my favorite sport to play. So, you know, just stick with what you like to do, you know. 
stick with what yeah. absolutely yeah speaking of that i mean you and i grew up in a time you know in in a situation like i'll, I'll describe i'll describe you our, our situation that we're in gloucester mass you get a nine-year-old kid that comes into it joins young legends at nine years old starts playing street hockey maybe they play ice hockey for the local youth hockey program which is very good anyway yeah. um or they just love the game and, and they play street hockey when they hit 14 years old they start going into high school that's it there's no their street hockey basically ends nothing and what's really challenging is that there are kids that come back just to be a part of the game. They come back and they help us coach and yeah. we, we need them. That's a great thing. We do need them to come back and help us coach, mm -hmm. but there's also the, the, the desire for them to keep playing and that doesn't exist yet. So for us in young legends, we're, we're going to try to change that so that when we have our rank, we'll be able to have, you know, a high school program. Maybe it's just a tournament. You know, I know high school kids, yeah. some of them start having to work schedules get funky but then then increasing up to an adult program where we have in a division maybe a b division and maybe we even have co-ed you know co-ed teams i know there's yeah. women out there that would love to play so so that's the vision but the reason why i'm sharing all this with you is because growing up i was always on the small side as far as an ice hockey player you know i survived and played college hockey because i was uh maybe intelligent but i had to work extremely hard i had to have that that grit and tenacity but what I hope is that is that kids today with people like yourself, um, people like Corey, Alessandra Glista, Bobby Hauser, that kids will start to realize that the game doesn't have to end at the age of 14. You know, I can keep playing in a high school league. Tell us a little bit about how New Jersey even has a, they have a high school division, right? I honestly, I don't even know how Scott did it. It all of a sudden just came out of nowhere. All of a sudden we just had like this high school thing. And I know he, you know, it's not as simple as snapping your fingers like I just did, but he, he put a ton of work into it. And I mean, almost every high school in the region just had a bunch of players, a bunch of people willing to play. I, I honestly, I don't, I don't really know how it happened, but it's the first year and it was very successful. And I'm sure it's going to be growing for years to come. Do those kids represent their school or yeah. are they, they do? Yeah. Like you, whatever high school you're, you know, you're at, you got to play for if you can't play for you know, you can't play for a different team because you want to play with your buddy or something. That that's real. That to me is really interesting, and I wonder if someday I'm looking around as if I I don't know the answer, but someday I wonder if we'll see more high school high school ball hockey um, where you represent USA ball hockey. Like they want to grow it. Like they I think they're they're they really like what's been getting done around here, and they'd like to bring it to other areas. So I think that is the goal. Um, and, you know, it'll, it won't, you know, it'll take some time to get there, but I definitely think that that's something that's in the future. And that, and that again is sort of like where if I was growing up now, I was always the type of kid who played on select teams because I, I love to play, but I also wanted to get better. I wanted to be the best player I could, I could become. Yeah. And that mindset has never changed really, uh, even, even in my career. Um, but the reason why I say that is because I got a chance to go to the USA ball hockey, uh, for the for the invitational that was supposed to be this coming weekend in Buffalo that I was going to be helping out with. <laughs> and I got to go seeing the team Massachusetts try yeah. it. And I was, I told my dad on the, on the way back home, cause he went up with me. I was like, if I was these kids age, this is exactly where I'd be right now. I'd be trying out. Uh, their team, you know what I mean? And, and kids today, they're, it's, they're just so fortunate to have those things. But again, like I said, as, as long as I can, as long as we can help get players and people to know that this stuff does exist. Yeah. Um, you know, that that's part of our goal. So uh, you had mentioned this a little while ago. Tell me, tell me, tell us a little bit about your technology. Like how do you guys view your games? Uh, who's in charge of that type of stuff? It's, I mean, it's me, Gianni and TJ run, like, you know, we kind of direct people what to do. And um, we have a lot of people that help us out and we'll record the games for us. But I mean, we just, in Marlton, we stand in the penalty box or on top of the benches with just an iPhone and just, you know, follow the game. That's awesome. And then what we did last year was, in my condo, I made the guest bedroom into like an EBHL office and we had three desks in there and Tuesdays were just me, Gianni and TJ all had off. So we'd all meet up on Tuesdays and we would put in like an eight hour day, just editing video, doing the stats, um, putting everything together, you know, setting our posts up for the week on social media and 
pretty much on Tuesday, we would edit every single game, every single highlight, and then we'd put it into like a little calendar and just throughout the week, things would just post and they would just, you know, go on our social media. I, re- I, re- I re- you know, for the people around you, I really recommend them checking it out because it's some cool stuff and it shows like the level of competition that we have. And, you know, the top plays, the, one of the last things you'll see on the EBHL on, um, or Eve Sham Hockey on Instagram is we did our top 20 plays of the season last year. And some of the plays, like, some of the, I mean, it's just, it's fun to watch. These guys are good. Like, it's some, it's some, it's some cool stuff. But yeah, between Instagram and then we have on, on YouTube, we did, like, on NHL.com, like, the condensed games, where it's not just, like, the gold. It's, like, all the, like, you know, high action plays and stuff. We condensed them to, like, each game has, like, a nine-minute highlight reel that, uh, you know, shows every single thing that happened in the game, essentially, throughout the year. So, and that was going to happen in the National Ball Hockey League, too. We told everyone, like, the big thing is this. We, we can't just make this and have it just, you know, be at the rinks. It has to be able to be seen everywhere. So all the regions had people set up that they were going to film the games. They were going to send them to us. We were going to edit them and do all the same social media for the National Ball Hockey League stuff. So everyone would have seen every single game of the whole season. That, that's, that's awesome. That's great to hear. I mean, it, uh, I mean, I, we have someone that does some of our – video and stuff like that he does a great job but it's time consuming to do that stuff yeah. as well so yeah, it's, um it's a learning curve for sure and and i'm not the greatest when it comes to the tech you know <laughs> even with these podcasts it's just zoom you know and, and off we go but i i just i'm i'm so impressed with the things that have developed i feel very fortunate to be able to see some of the developments that are that are happening and um you know, even for our adult players, our adult team, I, I hope they realize that there's going to be more opportunity down the road. And, um, you know, we're hoping that someday we'll be able to play it at, at you know, in a lemon or at a national event or Pittsburgh, et cetera. So, um, you know, but it, like you said, it's this, it's this, this visual It's trying to get people to know that these programs exist and that these people are pretty good athletes too. I mean, just oh, yeah. awesome. Um, there was one other question I wanted to ask you, it was, where do you see the game maybe five, ten years down the road? Do you see it in the Olympics? You know, what, what do you sort of envision for, for the sport? I mean, I'm, I hope we get in the Olympics. I'm, we got the right people in charge that are making all the right moves to get us there. It's just – it's a process. It's a huge process. Obviously, the Olympics are obviously not a joke. It takes some time to get the recognition and the respect to get there. Um. I think USA ball hockey is doing some pretty awesome stuff with growing the game. Like I think it all starts with youth and growing youth ball hockey and getting more players involved and letting them, you know, grow into, you know, adult players and see that going. So, you know, hopefully the national ball hockey league keeps developing and becomes even bigger and encompasses more of the country, more players. And maybe we can even branch off to a higher level and become professional someday. That would be, you know, that's the dream. I, I, you know, I would love to get there, but, realistically i want to you know stay on the path that we're going keep growing keep growing and just kind of take the chances we get you know these national teams i think their competition of players that are coming up is going to make these teams much more difficult to make i think these you know there's going to be just huge pools of players trying to make these teams so i see our national teams just improving incredibly over the next you know 10 or so years you know i just the past, you know, honestly, like two or three years, the amount the sports grown is the most I've really ever seen it. So I think it's just going to keep going the way it is. You know, even like you guys, like you're like a small new program. I'm sure there's tons of other programs like you guys that are just kind of starting off playing on a small little basketball court rank that are looking to get their own. So, you know, as everything else grows, those programs will too. So you, you hit it on the head. I mean, even for us, I mean, I mean, we started Young Legends back in 2004, but we're really at the beginning of this stage of entering the world of, of ball hockey and deck hockey. We really are because once we have that rink, that's when it'll be like, okay, you know, where does this go a little bit? But I mean, with that said, you, you're so right about that because there are so many little pockets of street hockey programs in Massachusetts. Like everybody knows of, of Lemonster, Fitchburg, they know Milek, they know those, the, you know, the, I mean, Lemonster is probably the, the big one in Milek and then, but Fitchburg has really become a hub as well. Yeah. And, and, then you, and then, you know, you have us out northeast of Boston. But then even around Boston, there's like, 
you know, you got like Watertown, Weymouth, these small, they're not small towns, but they have programs, you know, like Hudson, there's a Hudson deck hockey program, which is a little bit West of the state. Um, Southwest. I would say it's Southwest of Leominster. Um, if you're from Hudson, I, I actually don't really know how to describe it. So um, I, I just know I've been biased. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, there's pockets of these grassroots programs that I think could really produce a pretty solid league, like even Massachusetts. You know, what if we did all join together at one point and have a have a, you know, crown our own champion from our own town and then have a state championship that's yeah. at, at Lemonster and Fitchburg. So I just think there's a lot of possibility that. Um, but we need people like you. We need people like Corey. We need people like Alessandra and, and Bobby Hauser, people that are willing to help grow the game and people like Deck Hockey Focus that can give the publicity that, yeah. you know, it needs. So, absolutely. Um, you know, so, so I'm really, I'm, as you can tell, I'm really excited about where the game is headed. Yeah, no, no, it's awesome. And, you know, I'm really, I'm a, I'm a big fan of what you are doing as well. I think it's going to be a great, um, I think it's going to be a great league. I really do. I even love the concept of it. I, I think, you know, you guys hit it, nailed it on the head with having a championship from each state that, you know, yeah. so, um, thank you. Yeah. My, my pleasure. Thank you for doing this. My last question is, um, sort of mo moving forward. Is there anything that you're really excited for when the quarantine ends? <laughs> like, are you talking hockey or just in general? It, just in general, anything could be, it could be hockey too. I mean, I can't wait for the NHL to do their little 2014 playoff thing. I hope that comes through. I just want to, I just want to watch sports again, honestly. <laughs> I just miss it so much. You Did know. they agree on that, by the way? On I, the think, I think the players agreed on it. I don't think the owners are uh, – they voted on it yet. But as far as I know, the players, like, said, like, let's do it. So, I just want to watch any sporting event, like, at all. Like, I've enjoyed watching some of the throwback games on ESPN, but after so long, it's like, all right, I need something new. Especially, like, I'm a Flyers fan. The Flyers look good this year. I thought this, you know, they were one of the best teams in the East, and now this happened, so. How do you choose between the Flyers and the Devils? It's, it's regional. Like, South Jersey, I'm, I'm 20 minutes from Philly. I was in Philly literally, like, three hours ago. Like, it's right, it's right there. It's right over the bridge. Whereas the Devils, to get to their stadium, it's a good probably, like, hour and a half drive for me. So all the way up north, almost right by New York. So if you're from North Jersey, generally you like either the Devils or uh, even like the Rangers. Um, but I mean, there's some people down here that like the Devils too. But I'd say where where I am in South Jersey, it's 90% Flyers fans. I, I've been to the I've been to Wells Fargo to watch the Bruins and the Flyers play, and uh, yeah. Flyers won. Um, <laughs> Every time I went there, the Flyers beat the Bruins. But uh, either way, it was uh, – I got a chance to live in Philadelphia for a year where I was going to grad school down there at Drexel. And um, I, I told the story. I think to Corey – I want to say it's – I can't remember. I want to say – I lived in Ardmore, Pennsylvania, but it was, it was south of Ardmore. I went to the same rink. I, I can't remember what it was. But I, it was Saturday morning league. I play roller hockey. Yeah. And then after my game, every week, the ball hockey players came on. And I, I've told the story many times now. Uh, but I'm like, wait a minute. These guys are going to run up and down this rink? You know what I mean? Like, and, they, and they did. I was like, I, I just didn't expect that because, you know, being a roller hockey, you're kind of lazy compared to ball hockey players. Uh, you know, you know there's, there isn't, there's no blind. Yeah. So, uh, but that's, that's when I realized how, you know, the big the sport was. And I actually enjoyed playing roller hockey quite a bit down there. And, um, but, again, I, I – that was my first of actually seeing real ball hockey and look where it is now. It's growing. So. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's kind of the stigma. We got to shake a little bit. People, you know, a lot of people see it for the first time. Like, what is this? Why aren't they skating? So <laughs> yeah. you got to normalize a little bit more, which is why you got to make it a little more visible. So we're getting there. We're getting there. Absolutely. And it's, 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 it's a great sport. So um, Anthony, thank you so much for, for doing this today. I appreciate it. It's great to meet you finally. Yeah. Likewise, I appreciate you having me on. I think what you're doing with this podcast is great. You know, it's it's I've watched several of them, and you know, it's just cool to watch. It's it's great seeing people grow the sport any way possible. Thank you. Is there a way for people to reach out to you or to find NBHL? I can even post a link, but to hear it from you, um, our website is uh, the NBHL.com, or if you just um, our Instagram is just National Ball Hockey League, and that's where you're going to see like most of our updates. Same with our Facebook page, just the National Ball Hockey League on Facebook. 
Um, if you send us a message on any of those, I'll get back to you within 20 minutes. But um, yeah, we just, all our social medias, that's, you know, can get in touch, get our updates, everything's up there. Same with Eve Shambal Hockey, the EBHL. Um, we got a lot of updates on there. And yeah, yeah, we're not, we're not, we're not tough to get a hold of. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you. Um, so we will, uh, you and I will get a chance to stay in touch and um, I know we'll be following the league whenever it gets started, even if it is, like you said, sort of a mini version this year, yeah. but um, thank you for all that you're doing for the sport and uh, stay safe while you're, you know, going to the hospital every day. Yeah. I'll do what I can. You as well. <laughs> thank thank you. All right. Everybody, uh, well, I want to say thank you to Anthony for doing this podcast with me today. Um, he's a special guy. It's people like Anthony that create leagues, create opportunities for people of all ages to play. And so I hope you'll check out the NBHL. I know I will be. Our game plan is to at least go and see it when it's up here in Fitchburg. Um, and also thank you for being a nurse during this time, too, even if you're not on the front lines. But feel free to check, take a look at that. I will try to post a link for everybody in, in the podcast so that everybody can take a look at it. And um, I hope everybody's staying safe, and I will talk to you soon. Thanks so much.